If you can't talk to God, if you can't say something to your neighbor about God, if you can't, don't know God, you need to start over again. Thomas A. Dorsey, not to be confused with the big band leader, Tommy Dorsey, wrote the classic gospel hymn, Take My Hand, in 1932. He was born in 1899 in Villa Rica, Georgia, a small town about 40 miles west of Atlanta. As his father was an itinerant preacher and his mother an organist, he and his seven brothers and sisters grew up in Mount Prospect Baptist Church, and they knew church music well. When the family gathered together and left rural Georgia, and moved to Atlanta in 1908, Thomas had a hard time adjusting. He was placed a year behind his classmates who made fun of his speech and his clothes. His mother started Thomas's piano lessons when he was seven years old. He dropped out of school when he was 12, began working at the Nickelodeon Theater where he learned some mighty new piano licks. He also played rent parties where tenants hired musicians to play and they would pass the hat around to raise money for the rent. These parties played a major role in the development of jazz and blues music. Dorsey states, quote, As a boy, I saw pop, ginger ale, red rock at the theater. I'd hang around and I learned a lot. I learned to play the blues. In 1915 or 1919, at the height of the Great Migration, he moved to Chicago, studied composition and arranging at the Chicago College. But then he began playing in nightclubs under a variety of names, Georgia Tom, Texas Tommy, Barrel House Tom. He put together a jazz band called the Wildcats Jazz Band to play for and tour with Ma Rainey, the mother of the blues. It, his wife, Nettie, was Miss Rainey's wardrobe mistress. In 1928, Dorsey hit the top of the blues charts with its tight, tight like that, that sold more than seven million copies. He started weaving together blues and jazz with the text of traditional spirituals. Upbeat, his music added pep, bounce, rhythm. The combination, however, was not well received. The established churches considered them sacrilegious. He persisted, calling the new sound gospel because they represented good news. What did they say it was? You mean to tell me you don't know that good news? On down through the ages, gospel was good news. Now, if you don't know that, I will throw you out here by saying. Dorsey proclaimed that his songs lifted people out of the muck and mire of poverty and gave them hope. In 1925, he met and married Nettie, Nettie Harper. A year later, he experienced a nervous breakdown. His fingers locked up, and for two years, he was unable to play, with, which, of course, meant no work or income. To survive, Nettie took a job doing laundry. But while attending a church service, he experienced a miraculous healing. This led him to return to God, and he wrote his first gospel song, If you see my Savior, tell him that you saw me. <laughs> See my 
I'll say, if you tell him that you saw me, when you saw me, I was on my way. You may meet some old friend who may ask him for me. of a neighbor who was just about to cross swelling tide and I asked him if he would do me a favor please take this message over to the other side well if you see my savior tell him he became active in Pilgrim Baptist Church in Chicago, where he served as the church's choir director for 40 years. Choir members remember he was strict but a caring director who demanded promptness and preparation. Take My Hand, Precious Lord, was written in response to his inconsolable bereavement and grief at the death of both his wife and newborn son. Let's hear Dorsey tell the story himself. You know, we was in a revival, and my wife was to become a mother. I went away with the feeling that uh, she'd make a Lovely, love the mother when I came back. I knew my people were well when I left home. And they sent for me to come to the door. I said, boy, I brought him in a telegram. I took it and read it. I almost fell out. It says, hurry home. Your wife just died. I don't know how you would accept that, but I couldn't accept it at all. And uh, a friend of mine put me in the car and took me right home. I got home, I jumped out and ran in to see if it was really true. And one of the girls just started crying and said, Nettie just died, Nettie just died, Nettie just died, and fell in the floor. The baby was left alive, but in the next two days, the baby died. Now, what should I do then and there? And then they tried to tell me things that would so be soothing to me. But none of it's never been soothing to me from that day to this day. But uh, two fellows come by, I forget their names, they were friends of mine. And uh, they were telling me about it. And I says, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to do. And uh, I just tried to make my little talk to the Lord, but it was wasting, I think. And uh, I called the Lord some one thing, and the, the one of the other says, says, no, that's not his name. Say, precious Lord. I said, that just sounds good. And it's got several amens on precious Lord. Dorsey drew extensively from the hymn tune Maitland, which he probably learned in Sunday school as, Must Jesus Bear the Cross Alone? The tune's composer is unknown. The song has been recorded by many famous singers, including Elvis, Nina Simone, Leontine Price sang it at the state funeral of Lyndon B. Johnson. Beyonce sang it at the Grammy Awards. Aretha sang it at Mahalia Jackson's funeral. Lead me on. The most famous version was recorded by Mahalia Jackson, the Queen of Gospel, whom Dorsey mentored and accompanied. The song was a favorite of Martin Luther King Jr. Through the storm, through the night, 
He invited Mahalia to sing it at civil rights rallies to inspire crowds. And at his request, she sang it at his funeral in Princess April 1968. Love. King's last words in Memphis, just before his assassination, were to his musician for that night, Ben Branch. Ben, make sure you play Take My Hand, Precious Lord, in the meeting tonight. Play it real pretty. Precious Lord has been translated into more than 50 languages. Dorsey died at age 93 in January 1993. For his innovative blending of sacred and secular styles, he is remembered as the father of modern gospel music. <laughs> 